So the question number two is with regards to uh, managing the snow management and configuration console, right? That we also call the SMAC for short. Um, so the question is, how do we create a user in the SMAC? And then also, how do we um, manage our organizational units? So the first, the first answer to that question is, or the first stipulation, the only stipulation is, are you on premise? Are you hosted, right? So if you're a hosted customer, this is something that would actually take place um, by the, the hosting provider would, would do the work, right? So you put in a support request, uh, whether that be that you need a new user that has access uh, to snow, uh, or you need some alterations to your organizational unit, right? Um, but uh, going to the on-premise um, uh, stipulation or scenario, um, the, the interface is very easy to navigate. Uh, and you can see here, I'm actually remoted into a, uh, a server that has a uh, snow license manager installed uh, and has this Mac here. So uh, you can see that we have our users under security and we have our roles here and our audit logs, which are just uh, going to be capturing the user login information and things like that. Uh, but what's important to understand here is um, that, you know, snow is a role based uh, application, right? So we can application uh, and assign them to roles that come out of the box. Uh, we can also uh, have our users uh, logged in right through single sign-on. So depending on how you're um, set up, right, so when uh, Snow is implemented in your environment, uh, your username can be simply your SAM account name, right, and there's some settings on the installation side that will uh, allow for the single sign-on to take place, right, so Active Directory, uh, or LDAP-based single sign-on. Uh, it's a very simple interface to navigate here. Um, we don't need to set valid dates for users. We can just assign them uh, an email address, a username. Um, obviously, you know, we, we want to set our language settings for out of the box uh, when they do log in. And then we can set it up, right? So we can set up a default password for our users and, and send that out and force them to have a change when they come in. Uh, the other things that are important to understand are the roles, right? So when we do assign a role, what is it that for the individual is going to be doing in Snow, right? So uh, roles can control a lot of different things, right? Uh, they control what the user sees uh, and what the user can actually do within the system. Uh, so when we have conversations about this, right, this is something that's important to understand. And we do have this documented within our uh, online documentation, uh, the user guide, the, the, the Snow Management and Configuration User Guide. We'll talk about the roles and how you can create them. Uh, out of here, you can see the default uh, settings, right, or roles that are available, uh, you know, pretty much all ha hands on deck, right? The administrators that can come in and do everything, delete data, you know, do all those things, right? Um, the API user is a role that uh, allows an account to access the data uh, from within the Snow database uh, structure, right, over a WebREST API call. So we can serve up data with this API. We can do it in JSON format. We can do it in XML. Uh, we can do it in HTML, right? So any type of uh, downstream systems that you want to make calls in the snow, we'd set up an API account. And that just gives them that right to pull that data out, right? There's no need for any other, um, any functionality with an API, right? It's just reading, reading the data and, and serving it up in a format to your choosing. Um, the uh, license administrator and the viewers, right, those are just two more specific roles. Uh, the license administrator gives you access to those things that you uh, would consider, you know, the part of the software asset management functionality with regards to agreements and entitlements, right? Important. Um, and uh, in a lot of scenarios, right, uh, customers don't want their, uh, they don't want certain end users coming in and seeing financial data around those, those type of things, right? So, we have the ability to assign only those at a very, you know, kind of a macro level that have you know, control over all the license data. Uh, and then we can just make a viewers, right, where they don't see uh, anything other than functionality that allows them to write reports or generate reports, those type of things, right? So that's, that's, that's how the roles are assigned, right? So we do roles and then we have organizational restrictions, which is a, uh, a way for us to be able to place end users into a certain uh, geographical role, cost center, uh, business unit, and that's kind of where I segue over into uh, the actual organizational units themselves.
So the way we can take this data in is via uh, just a, a manual interface, right? So I can come in here and I can see I have a very base uh, looking organizational structure, right? Company is my, uh, my top level, right? Well, my company might actually not be um, uh, called company, right? Maybe it's just called Acme, right? Everybody uses Acme as a, uh, as a, a nomer for a company, right? Um, and then I have my different geographical units, right? So I can embed uh, these different uh, nodes, right? So I could go in here and I'd say, hey, you know, Acme just, um, uh, we actually have something now over in Asia Pacific, right? So my APAC region, and I can give it an organizational name, right? So I might have some cost center type of stuff, right? When we talk about business units, cost centers, they might have some codes and things like that. Um, it might not be the most uh, user friendly, right? So I don't know if APAC had a cost code of 01 alpha alpha, right? I don't know what that means, but in the friendly, uh, the friendly scheme of things or the friendly name here, right? We can just say, hey, it's APAC. Now this legal organizational node um, mentioned here, right? Is all about, is this a legal entity within the company? So understanding now we start getting into the discussions around licenses and how we, 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 we contain licenses to certain entities. Um, I'm sure, uh, I don't, I'm not sure where everyone is in your journey with, with software asset management with snow, but when we talk about a legal entity, right? And we talk about auto allocation, we can drop licenses into a bucket, right? We might have an agreement for APAC. Uh, we might have our own Microsoft, uh, EA, right? Um, and we want auto allocate to go across those different business units and cost centers that are within the APAC region, right? And you say, well, I don't see any there right now. I could quickly go in there and say, yeah, well, we do have our own IT department over there, right? And they own their own copies of Visio, right? So it's important that we be able to embed these or nest these different things. But the bottom line is it, it gives you the power, right, to assign licenses to different geographical units, business units, cost centers, uh, and have those stay within those organizations. So if I, you know, did own a Visio professional 2016 over in um, uh, Asia Pacific, right? and um, uh, somebody installed it over in EMEA, obviously Snow is going to see that all the way across, right? Because we have total visibility across everything that's installed. But we don't want that license to leave the Asia Pacific organizational unit and move over and cover someone in EMEA. So that's, you know, that's a, a very brief in, uh, introduction if you haven't already started diving into those type of uh, concepts, right? About licenses and how they're assigned or entitlements and how they're assigned. But um, back to the original uh, uh, where I was going with the data, right? So we can bring the data in this way. Um, we can actually bring the data in through a organizational import, right? So I could actually come in and import this file from an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and I could import it from Active Directory. Now, a lot of times companies are very, um, they're very aligned within a, a different structure, right, than Active Directory. Active Directory, is, is, is really not a great place to be managing uh, assets like at the cost center and business unit level, right? It's, it's, uh, it's used for a lot of other reasons. Obviously it's a, um, you know, an authentication uh, you know, database and it allows us to do some of those things and identify information in our environment, computers and users, uh, some of those things. But um, when it comes to the actual cost centers and accounting functions and things like that, typically it's left outside of the Active Directory structure, right? So it's not the same. So for those companies that say, yeah, we want to mimic Active Directory, we can literally bring in those OUs and have them defined automatically, or we can take an import file, right? And we and there are documentation. We have a nice uh, how-to, right? It just talks about how you line up the columns. So when I go over here and I look at this, you know, here are the column headers. It's very simple, right? Very straightforward import. Um, and then once you're in snow, right, the ability to assign these um, uh, to these different you know, users and computers and things like that, right, they can be assigned to these, uh, these different elements uh, using different uh, um, methodologies, right? We can do it through imports. We can actually do it through what we call the auto allocation or uh, the auto assignment rules, right? So we do have the ability to go in there and, and have computers go to Asia Pacific, right? we could literally have those automatically be assigned just based on a, 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 what we call an auto connect rule, right? And, and the, the, what's important about these auto connect rules, right, 
is that they can be driven on a lot of different things. Um, one of the easiest ones to, to leverage is the IP subnet range, right? So when we talk about uh, a computer in uh, uh, Asia Pacific, uh, the, the subnet range is clearly going to be different, right? And we know at our top two octaves um, versus what our, uh, our subnet range would be for um, EMEA, right, or the US. So we can identify data centers, right? We can get down into splitting hairs at a very fine level. And we can do these auto connect rules based on subnet ranges. We can do them based on, um, uh, you know, how a computer's named. You might have geographical naming nomenclature. You might have cost center names. You know, there's a lot of different things that be, can be employed here, right? Um, so uh, where to start, right, is obviously your, your, your base structure, which can change, and it always does. Companies are always adding new cost centers. Sometimes they're deprecating them or removing them from the organization. Or they're merging them, right? So they merge them into something else. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that can change. And it, it gives you the ability to make those changes on the fly um, and then auto assign those, uh, those different uh, computers and, and users as, as, uh, as you see fit. Um, so I'm gonna stop right there.